All right, guys, welcome back. Now, there are three types of basic circuits that we have in electronics. That's the series circuit, the parallel circuit, and the series parallel circuit. And in this, let's take a look at first the series circuit. So we have our 12 volt battery. We have electron flow, direct current DC flowing in one direction. It comes up through the wire, through this load, and back down through this load. In a series circuit, the current is always the same. You can see because the current's got one line. So if there's if there's two amps flowing right here, there's gonna there, that two amps has nowhere else to go but through the other load. So every load has the same amount of current. And the voltage is divided between the two loads because the voltage drops across here. And if you did if you did your um, your Ohm's law, you would see that both of these, both of these loads drops six volts each. Now, we don't have in HVAC loads that are in series, and you should never have loads that are in series because it it divides the voltage between the two loads based on their resistance, and they will not operate properly if they are they are in series and that doesn't matter whether it's a relay, a motor, a compressor or a zone valve on a boiler. The other thing I want to mention, Ohm's law only has to do with strictly resistive circuits which these are and a resistive circuit in HVAC about the only one that we have are heaters so it would be a crankcase heater, electric strip heat, or a defrost heater in a refrigeration system. M motors and relays and zone valves and contactors and solenoids and actuators are all inductive loads. So Ohm's law has no bearing whatsoever when you're looking at, at a motor or anything else. Only for electric resistance heat strip heaters in HVAC does it work. But you still need to understand Ohm's law. Again, if nothing else, if when you take a journeyman's exam or you go take a trade exam for Nate. Okay, parallel circuit. So in a parallel circuit, all of the loads are connected almost like rungs of a ladder. Now let's look at our current flow. We have DC current, direct current, one direction, flows up this leg and here's one path. Here's the second path, and here's the third path. So the current, the available current through this circuit flows through all three of those loads. And the voltage, which is 12 volt, volts between this point and this point, is available across this load. So we have 12 volts here, we have 12 volts here, and we have 12 volts here. This is how we hook up our motors and any other load, inductive loads that we have, any resistive loads that we have in HVAC are always hooked up in parallel because that way it has the proper voltage and then your current required for this circuit is available to them all and as well as the voltage. And then we have the series parallel circuit and that is where we have both a series circuit which is right here and parallel circuits. All right, so three types of circuits, series par series circuits, parallel circuits and series parallel circuits. Now, parallel loads and remember Ohm's law only has to do with resistive circuits so if these these don't represent motors these would represent heaters of some type in HVAC that's why we don't use Ohm's law that often but let's just take a look at what happens here so we have a a parallel circuit and we have a 10 ohm load 
and a 15 ohm load. This is the formula for the for a parallel load circuit with two loads only. All right. So you take one load 10, multiply it by the other load 15. It's 150. Remember we do multiplication first. This is our this means divide, but we're going to wait because we have two different formulas to figure. Then we have 10 plus 15, which is 25. And then you divide 150 by 25, and you get the answer of 6. So why is that important? Well, look at this. We have, we have a 10-ohm load right here and a 15-ohm load right here. But what the voltage source sees over here is only six ohms. So if we added another load over here, let's say we put another resistance strip heater over here, and we added another load over here, that adds more resistance. As we add more resistance to here and here, this six ohms now begins to drop considerably and you overload that circuit. That's where that overload comes from. You have too many loads on there. The, re the apparent resistance to the incoming power begins to decrease, which increases the current, and then you start popping circuit breakers. All right, so you do need to know this formula. You need to write it down and practice it. If you have trouble, let me know. We'll get online and I'll help you through it. Otherwise, uh, you will probably never use this formula again other than for an exam, so keep it handy. So when you need to review, you can do that. All right, when we have um, a parallel circuit with more than three loads, and remember we looked at this one here, we had 10 and 15, now we've added 20. Remember I talked about that? So this is the formula for more than two parallel loads. So let's just look at this real quick. We had a 10 ohm load in the previous one and a 15 ohm load in the previous one. Then we added 20. And remember, these two, when you calculated, were 6. When you add that 20 ohm load to it, the apparent resistance of these three loads to the power supply is 4.76 ohms, and it starts to decrease. So the more loads that you put on, the more current that you need and more amperage that this circuit will draw. All right, so it's a little bit more complex formula, but again, if you write this down, you can plug in the numbers and, and work it out. So we have, here's the formula. It's the reciprocal of 1 divided by the resistance of 1, 2, 3 loads. So that's 1 divided by 10, 1 divided by 15, 1 divided by 20. You do that division first, so it's 0 0.1, 0 0.06, 0 0.05. Add those together, gives you 0.21. You divide 1 by 0.21, and you end up with 4.6 ohms. All right, once again, memorizing this formula is not critical. It's knowing how to work this formula, and that's where you have your order of operations, like we talked about a little bit earlier, that is. The other thing to remember is Ohm's law goes out the window when we talk about motors, transformers, or any inductive load. And we'll look at it more in depth, and we'll get more in depth on this in a later, in a later um, lesson.